zoom in a little. Hey guys, this is Spencer from Pixel and Bracket. This is not my new intro. I don't have a good setup anymore and I wanted to talk to camera. So in this one, we're gonna look at how to use the blend tool. I'm not gonna really go through everything that you can do with the blend tool, but we're gonna split it up into three parts. The first part is gonna be how to distribute objects. The second part is gonna be how to uh, distribute objects and change the object as you merge it or blend it. And then the third part, if you're good, distribute objects on any type of curved path. All right, let's get into it. All right, all right. So the first thing I said we would do is I'm just gonna show you how to distribute objects along a path, so like from one point to the other. There's a couple ways we can do that with the blend tool. First, we need an object. So I'm gonna start with a star. We're gonna use the star tool, just click and hold on the rectangle tool or whatever tool, shape tool is there. And then I'm gonna click and we're gonna just create a star. I'm gonna hold shift and I'm gonna hold option. For you PC users, that's alt. We're gonna create it kinda of small out here. And this star is just black. So it's got a black fill and no stroke. Then I'm gonna switch to my selection tool. The shortcut key for that is V. I'm gonna grab this guy, hold option or alt, and click and drag him out. So we're gonna drag him. I'm gonna hold shift as well to keep him in line. So I'm holding shift and alt or option. And then we're just gonna drag him over here. So I'm gonna go from here to here and blend these two together to create the same amount of objects in between. So we're gonna select both of them. The blend tool is over here. It kinda of looks like a square and then to a circle shape. So you can see that blend tool. The shortcut key for that is W. What I wanna do first is actually double click on this tool. That's gonna to open up the blend options. Notice how we have a spacing and an orientation. For the spacing, we can do smooth color, which doesn't apply to us here since we're creating shapes, we're not trying to get a gradient going. Uh, we have specified steps, which means we can select the number of shapes in between the first and last shape, and a specified distance, which means we can uh, specify how far out each shape is spread out, and it'll just do that all the way through the path. So if we do specified steps, this is how many are in between the two shapes. So let's say I want to have five shapes spread out here, including these two. That means I need three in between them because the first one would be four and the last one would be five. If I hit okay, nothing happens. That's because we actually need to create the blend. Now notice the blend tool is still selected and I have this little uh, blend tool cursor. If I click on this first shape and then click on the second shape, it creates a blend between the two shapes. And remember, our blend option said three steps in between. So we have five shapes spread along this path. Now the cool thing with this, the cool thing, if we go to the direct selection tool, there's a couple things we can do here. Notice how the first shape and the last shape are the only two selected. That's because in between, Illustrator is doing some math and figuring out the shapes, and it's sort of showing you a preview. So we cannot directly select these shapes yet. I'll show you that at the end when we want to finalize it. But what we can do, we have this anchor point, right? So we have the path and we have the shapes that are on the path. If we click on this anchor point with the direct selection tool, remember the shortcut key is A for that, I can actually move this anchor point around to adjust not only the direction, but also the distance, the length of my path. So I can move this guy around to adjust just how far out these shapes are stretched across this path. I can sort of do the same thing if I only have two objects within here. If I use the direct selection tool and make sure you click on the full object, so somewhere in the center, not on the anchor point, I can move the object and that will move the path and the direction of the path as well. Now these guys are within a group, so you can isolate this group if I have the regular selection tool selected and I click on this blend, it obviously it grabs the entire blend and I can grab a corner and scale this guy up and down. I'm holding shift and option or alt to scale from the center out. I can do that, that's fine. But if I double click into this, it's kind of like a group, double click in and now look, I'm in layer one, I'm in the blend and so now I can select these objects separately because I'm within that isolated group and I can do the same thing, I can move them around. So if you wanna double click into it so you have that blend isolated, you can do that as well. So that's how you can do that, but let me show you one more thing. If I get out of this, I just double click outside of the blend, now I'm back on our base layer and I click on the blend. Remember we can double click the blend tool to bring up those blend options. We can also go up to object down to blend 
and then go to blend options. We're gonna bring up the same thing. Now notice we have the preview box selected. We can change the steps and we can change some of the orientation and things and see what happens as we preview that. So I've got my number selected on specified steps. I'm just gonna press the up arrow to increase the number so we can see how increasing the number affects our blend. So you can change it that easily, just like that. So let's switch the spacing to instead a specified distance. Right now it's four pixels, so these guys are right bunched up on top of each other. So I'm gonna hold shift and press the up arrow. That's gonna jump it by 10 pixels each time. And notice how these stars are getting further apart from each other. So we're gonna bump it up quite a bit until they have some actual spacing there. Okay, so they're spaced out by 240. Now, it doesn't just space them out by 240. It recognizes that you want even spacing in between. So you'll notice as I'm increasing this, it went from 240 to 250, but my stars did not change. That's because it's gonna wait until the next level that spaces out just three stars in between instead of four stars in between. So as I increase this, there you go, 290 actually makes that adjustment. So the blend tool will try to keep it evenly spaced while also honoring what you have uh, in that sort of pixel box there, what your specified distance is. And you'll notice that more as, it's, as there's more shapes on here. So you can also change the orientation, but that has to do with if you have a curved path. We don't have a curved path, however. We're moving on to part two. Part three is gonna be about the curved path. Part two is actually something really cool that's blend tool specific. Let me show you what that's about. I think I covered most everything in this portion here. If you have any questions about that, don't hesitate to comment below. But before we move on, I know everything just jumped. That's because I'm hopping back into this tutorial. I realized I missed something. If we have this guy selected, and I'm gonna space these stars out a little bit differently. We're gonna to go to specified steps and I'll count out maybe five in between. Okay, so we've got these stars out here. I meant to show you how to expand this, how to get a hold of all these shapes. So once you're done, once you've finalized, go up to object down to expand, and it's gonna ask you what do you wanna expand. I always just kinda of check mark object and fill. I hit okay, and now we have a group here with all these objects and those objects are individual now the blend we cannot mess with anymore so we've we've expanded the blend we're beyond being able to edit the blend but if we right click on this and ungroup now we have a bunch of individual shapes. So you can do that with at any point in this process. You'll notice as we move on in the tutorial, there's some cool stuff we'll be doing. And you can get all of those shapes as individual shapes by going to object down to expand. So now we're going to move on into the next part of the tutorial. I'm gonna create another star down here. And I'm also gonna create a circle on the other end. So we're gonna grab the ellipse tool, shortcut key L. I'm actually gonna change the color on this to show you guys something. We're gonna to go to, let's see, we wanna go, let's go to a, like a really, really light blue. There you go, okay. And I'm gonna create an ellipse over here, just like that. Okay, this is the, the power of the blend tool. I'm gonna select both of these. I'm gonna double click on my blend tool, check out specified steps. How about we do seven uh, shapes in between these two? Um, and then we're gonna do orientation's fine, hit okay. Now I'm gonna click on one shape and then click on the other shape and that's gonna blend from one to the other, whichever shapes that I click on. And check out what happened. It goes from the star and not only does the color gradiate down to the blue, it also changes the shape and figures out how to gradually change that shape or blend it into a circle shape. That's pretty cool. What, we got like Kirby right in the middle here somewhere? Uh, but it's pretty cool. I think this is an awesome, awesome tool. There's a lot of things you can do with it. This opens the door up for a lot of possibilities. The last thing I'm gonna show you is uh, how to use it on a curved path. And so we're gonna create a curved path just with the pin tool. The shortcut key for that is P. I'm gonna click and drag to kind of create some anchor points. We're just gonna create a messy little curve out here, sort of like an S curve a little bit. Uh, that is not a tutorial on how to do an S-curve. I just wanted to create something that definitely has a curve to it. Okay, I want no fill on this guy. And I just want a stroke on him of black so I can see that path. There's a little something called spine. So you know that path that goes from one shape to the other? It's actually called the spine. And you can replace that spine so we can create this blend. Once we have the blend created, we know we wanna go from this to this and this color to that color. I'm gonna select this and also select by holding shift 
this guy down here, or you can just click and drag over the both of them. It'll select both. Once you have both selected, Illustrator's smart enough that when you go up to Object, down to Blend, and then you go to Replace Spine, it knows where the blend is and what the spine is that you're replacing it with. So if we hit Replace Spine, look at that. We get our blend on top of the path that we just drew. And, and, if we select the direct selection tool or we double click into this path, we can begin to edit. Actually, no, we're going to need to select the direct selection tool because we can edit these points and these handles. And I can completely change this path if I want to to something really weird. Now, obviously, the spacing around curves gets a little weird. Uh, so, you know, you'll need to kind of tweak that and spread it out as needed. However, this is pretty sweet. And then you can also continue this path just like you could with the pen tool like normal. So shortcut, shortcut P for the pen tool, click on the end of that path and we can begin to change uh, how this path is. We can add to it. We can go back in and select this blend. Now I know that the, uh, the blend just flipped there. There's actually some options. If you go up to object down to blend, you can reverse the spine. So you can change the direction of it. You can switch that back to either the star starting here or the star starting here, and the blend will kind of reverse either way. So that's a way to kind of flip that in case it did what it did to me just now. Uh, but then we can go back to those blend options by having this blend selected, double clicking the blend tool, and we have specified steps right now. We could do specified distance. We can actually do smooth color, which smooth color doesn't allow you to do any specification. If we preview it, what it's gonna do is merge these shapes as close together as possible. So we have like a smooth gradient going all the way through. Uh, but the specified steps, we can up those steps and get to the point that we have a lot of shapes along our path. I covered a lot more than I expected to. I'm gonna double click out of this blend so we're back in the regular space. This looks super chaotic, but I hope you understand the power of the blend tool a little bit um, and how to use it some for, all, uh, you know, for distributing objects and then also for uh, maybe creating some cool uh, blends between one type of object to another. That is it for this tutorial. Like this video if you liked this video. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more tips and tutorials, and I'll see you next time.